What's up my friend? Today I'm going to show you how to handle multiple tracks in Pro Tools so you can have an efficient workflow. We're going to go through labels, colors, and I'm going to share with you a little secret that would supercharge your workflow. Macro from Mixing with Macro. I'm a professional recording and mixing engineer, and I've done recording and mixing for major record labels and many independent artists. My goal is to help you streamline your recording and mixing process for fast and consistent results. So I want to help you supercharge your mixes by giving you the opportunity to download a free five-step guide where I outline all the plugins I use, I outline all the settings within my plugins and my plugin chains that will take your vocal mixes to the sky. It's a quick read in under 10 minutes and you can have results in less than 30 minutes. So be sure to go ahead and check it out, absolutely free. Now let me show you how to handle multiple tracks in Pro Tools. All right, welcome to my computer. I'm going to show you how to handle your Pro Tools sessions, especially when you have multiple tracks. OK, we're going to go through labeling, color, and then we're going to get to an additional tool that you can use that most people do not use in their sessions to keep things organized. All right. Now we have this session here by Ray Bala, and this is just used for example purposes, just to show you how I structure everything. Now I have my beat right here. I have all the vocals coming in. I got a chance to record this session. So my record track is right here. All right. Now, why I want to show you this is simply because I was in the studio and an engineer saw me engineering and she said, you know what? That is one thing I need to learn. And I asked her, what is that? And she said, I need to know how to organize things. With that, I found organization is very important to your workflow. So you know exactly where everything is at all times. So you never get confused on what's what, what's his vocal, what's his... Because I've seen people session just going to cut some stuff up, look like this. Like this is down here and then this is up here and this is here and then they got this one here and it's like, what's what, bro? Like what is what is going on? So after this video, you're going to have a system that you can employ in your sessions to stay organized at all times. So when anyone else looks at your session, they're like, okay they can understand what they're looking at as well okay especially artists because most artists aren't technical they're just artists they just come they want to free their mind of whatever they're thinking or feeling at the moment but if they for some reason they need to articulate something to you for you to do to their vocal it would be beneficial if they could look at your session and say okay well this yellow spot right here move that down here i can tell what that is i can tell what this is i know what this is yeah that kind of stuff all right, so we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. Now, uh, you can put your master wherever you like to put your master. Some people like to put their master at the bottom, you know, and work from top to bottom. I like to have my master at the top because usually I'm working within this area right here. So the beat up to the background vocals and I have the main vocals right here. Because the ad-libs come last, usually is the last thing that the artists tend to do. I put it at the bottom so it's out of the way a lot of artists know how to do ad libs and they can just do it in this case this particular artist did it in one take so my job was really easy at that point so we're going to go from the master and we're going to start with labeling see i have my master I have the master i have all all vox all music if you want to know what these are i have a video i'm going to pop it up on the screen right now where i walk you through how to build out a template like what you're seeing right now Okay, then I have my beat. That's where my beat goes. If I have stems, all my stems would go here. So just for instance, let's just say I had more beat stems. Let's say I had like 10 stems coming in. All my stems would be right here. So let's just hide this for now. Okay, and I have my vocal auxes. This is where I keep all my processing. You can see the automation lane here. These are aux sends. This is where I do all my vocal processing. I record on this track. I don't do anything else with this track. I don't process vocals on this track. I just record on this track here. Then I have all my lead vocals right here. Stuff that's gonna be processed as a lead vocal. Then I have my double track where I process background vocals or you know, they call it ins and outs. They call it doubles. They call it stacks, whatever. For this session it's very simple just to keep things relatively easy to learn. But keep in mind, you can expand this or contract this as you please. So for instance, if I had multiple stacks, I would have multiple double tracks and they will all be yellow. I have ad-lib tracks here. This is where I 
process all my ad libs and I have my effects. This is where I have all my sins. So my delays, let me just open this for you. I have my delays, I have my reverbs, all that kind of stuff. Honestly, don't get distracted by all this stuff. I usually don't use all this stuff. I usually keep it very, very simple. But if I wanted to try something different, on a particular day or in a particular session then i might say hmm, let me try this or let me try that all right so look at how everything is labeled lead one two three four double one second double would be double two double three and so on i have my ad libs ad lib track one ad lib high ad lib low these are the names of my tracks i have lead record track that number there's just how many takes we've done and this is lead record i record in the lead on that track when i record just say we just recorded this piece of vocal once the artist is satisfied i drag it down to the lead and it's processed very similar to this so it's not sounding different from the lead track so it's not sounding different when it goes down here from the record track and that's how i do things with my labeling a lot of sessions i see just have random labeling so you don't know what's what so I would encourage you to label your stuff and save it as a template so you can always pull it up so you don't have to open a fresh session and then have to create everything and then label everything every time because you're just going to be wasting a lot of time when you could just be working on your song. Now pay attention to the colors. You can use any color that you want. I just choose these colors because they suit me. I like to see things and know exactly what is what when I see the color. So even if I do not notice the naming scheme I have here, I can look at the color and tell, all right, I know my ad lib tracks are purple. I know my doubles are on the yellow track. I know on my leads, it's black or it's none. If you want the black, you can just hit none. So for instance, if you were like that, you just hit none and it gives you black. I know my record track is always red because red is record. All right, that's, that's just me when it comes to that. And I don't usually use any beat colors on my beats. That's how I know color. I just make it like a dark green. Now you can use any color you want. I would encourage you to use the colors and keep it uniform so if you have all your leads make all your leads the same color if you have all your ad libs make all of them the same color same with your doubles all right same with your processing oxes all right all your oxes keep them the same color if you like green all your oxes should be green if they do a particular thing within your session make it that color and anything that does that thing in your session make it that color so you know Trust me, it's going to help you. If you want everything the same color, all you do is select the tracks and the clips within the tracks. You go down to this drop down menu, clips and tracks, boom, you can change everything like that. And it's that simple. If you like things more uniform, I don't mind it not being uniform. I could just look here and I know where I'm at. Now, let me show you how to organize your stuff even further. Now, let's just say you did have a lot of beat stems. Let me pull back up these beat stem tracks that I made earlier. There we go. Now, just say you had a bunch of beat stems, like this was here, this was here, here. Just say they're all filled up with beat stems. I will select all of them, hold down option shift. This is a secret I'm about to show you. Right click and move them to a new folder. Call them beat stems. Boom. Now you have all your beat stems in the folder. So as soon as you finish doing whatever you have to do with your beats, close the folder up. That's it. It's that simple. Now you have it very organized. So I did the same thing with my vocals. If you want to close the folder quickly, it's shift F. Boom. You could close your folders quickly. Shift F just like that. My mindset when it comes to mixing is all right. If it's in a mixing session, then I would work on my vocals and make sure my vocals are sounding right. As long as my vocals sound amazing and the, the way I want it to sound, I close the folder. Now I work on my beat. If I have to do all these cuts, I do my cuts, I do my effects, or I make my beats, I do my EQ in and my mixing within the beat, and I close it up. If I'm working on them simultaneously, boom, I have them both open, work on them together. When I'm ready to do a quick master, I open my master. I can process my entire beats right here. I can process all my vocals here and I can process everything together on this aux track here. And that is it, my friend. Just a quick recap. Label everything according to what it is. If it's a double, name it double. If it's a lead, name it a lead. If it's an ad lib, name it an ad lib. If it's a beat, just call it. Or if you like to put the name of the beat, 
Pro Tools, you see, this is a long name that I have here. So you see how it kind of Pro Tools abbreviates it. Just keep the name simple so you know exactly what it is. Make sure that your colors match the things that you're working on. So if you have a bunch of leads, have them have the same color. If you have a lot of oxes, make your oxes the same color. You can make any color you want. And last but not least, if you have a lot of stuff that you're working on, a lot of content, put them in folders just like that. So when you're finished working on it or you don't need to see something anymore, so you're not scrolling forever, close it up and open the next thing that you need to work on. I appreciate you sticking around with me. That is how you handle multiple tracks in Pro Tools when you have a lot of content to work with. Now you have a new skill to add to your arsenal to supercharge your workflow. Again, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.